Good morning and welcome to Bridgewater United Church Online. We're really glad that you've joined us and want to extend a special welcome today to our friends who are watching in Newfoundland. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to explore one of our values here at Be United of responsiveness to the world. And so let's begin with the singing of our Be United chorus and the lighting of our candles. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When do we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some of you know that I've been doing renovations at our house. And the most recent challenge we've run into is a ceiling fan that seems to have a mind of its own when it comes to how it's been wired. If you have two switches on, it doesn't work. One on it sometimes does. Both on it may or may not. So I don't know how it's been wired, but I know it hasn't been wired correctly. And as I think about wiring, I think about how are we wired as well. And I think about the conversations that I have with people about whether people can change or not whether hope is something that's just a made-up idea, whether people can actually learn to love and to care for one another, or is, is it that we're just built and wired to survive, that through evolution and the way that we've been created, that really at the end of the day, each of us is out for ourselves. You know, there's that old saying that I hear all too often, that charity begins at home. But you know, there's been great breakthroughs in neuroscience and the study of the human brain. And one of the wonderful breakthroughs, at least I think so anyway, is that it's well known now that as human beings, and we are very different than other animals, that human beings are actually wired to care. That it's deep, deep within us and, and built into our wiring that the way that we want to work, ought to work, is in relationship with each other in a way that is caring, compassionate, and empathic. It's why if we watch a touching story or movie or even a Kleenex commercial for some of us that we can't help but well up and have a tear in our eye. It's why programs like CNN's heroes are so popular when we hear inspirational stories 
about how people have selflessly given of themselves to serve another human being or group of people. And we know, especially here in the Maritimes, how generous we are as a population, as a culture, when it comes to coming together in the time of crisis or need, whether it's a family who have lost their home to fire in our local community, or a big push to keep a church building open, that people come together, that people care. Today we explore this value at Be United of responsiveness to the world. And it's intentional that we use the word responsiveness because it's action-oriented. And it comes from this deep belief and commitment that our mission as a church is not just to put on worship services for, for spiritual growth and spiritual reflection. It's not to keep our operations, our ministry personnel and our buildings and staff going. That we do what we do at the core of who we are because we hear the call like we did in the scripture today. That to create heaven on earth, to truly embody God's vision for community and for us to be in relationship with each other means that we need to respond especially to the most basic needs that we find in our brothers and sisters. That it just is wrong. It's un ungodly. That there are people in our community who are hungry. And we know in this area of Nova Scotia, we have a very large percentage of children who go to school hungry. And so that's not right. And these basic needs need, need met. And so we respond through different food programs and through our volunteers and our commitment to the food bank here and in other ways to see that that, that, gets, that gets rectified, that people are fed. And that as we look around and learn of, of women who have escaped very difficult relationships and domestic abuse, that, that we need to make sure they have at least the basic necessities of life, including dignity, compassion, acceptance, and love. And so we respond to them. That when we hear stories of discrimination against immigrants or our indigenous community, people of color and others, that, that we respond because we respond out of a deep commitment mission and belief that it's God's desire and therefore our desire to have a world where, where every single person can live with dignity with their basic human needs being met. And so as we look around, as sad as it is at times in our own local communities, we can see all kinds of needs. And while we can't respond to them all, each of us as individuals but also as churches have particular gifts and abilities. We have particular resources that we can use and utilize to see that God's children are clothed, loved, fed, and nourished, and ultimately loved. And as each of us do our part in that, surely, surely, everyone's lives will be made better. But this idea of responsiveness to the world goes much further than our local community. And as I said in the beginning, often there's an idea that charity begins at home, but, but I'm a firm believer that in order for us to really nurture our spiritual health, our spirit of generosity, our spirit of acceptance of all, that we have to look further. That we also have to have to start to develop and, and have a global understanding. Because what we do in this part of the world does affect other parts of the world. There's no question that developed countries, that the Western world, so to speak, has exploited, harmed, and taken advantage of our friends, our neighbors in the global south in Africa and in other countries. And that those individuals and, and countries still experience the effects 
of our very unchristian choices, ways of doing business, ways we've structured our entire systems. And so we have a responsibility for people here locally, but also those who seem, in some ways, far across the ocean or sea. You know, I really am a firm believer that as we mature spiritually and, and as we grow, as we start to recognize that all of God's people are created in God's image, that whether it's somebody in my own family, whether it's somebody just down the street here from the church, or it's a young woman in Nigeria being kidnapped on a bus, a child sewing our clothes in the Philippines, that there are, there are brothers and sisters, they are our children, our mothers, and our fathers just like those closest to us. That as we start to develop this idea and this deep sense that we are all spiritual beings, all belonging to this one great God, that truly, 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 what happens to one happens to us. That when a group of people are suffering, we all suffer, and God suffers as well. And and the same is true when we reach out and when we love another, that we all benefit and are uplifted by a global response, a humanitarian response. When we move and respond out of that wiring that we have to care and to be empathic. So what keeps us from responding to the world? Well, I think part of it is we can feel overwhelmed. When we watch the news and read the newspaper or articles or dive into documentaries or, or learn a little bit more about some of these very, very important global issues, whether it's environmental racism or what's happening with our indigenous populations and drinking water in Canada, slave labor, the child sex trade, or children being exploited in workshops, war, rape, just destruction in so many ways to, to human community, yeah, we can be overwhelmed. And I really don't think we're called to respond to all of it. But I do believe that there's moments as we hear and learn about different issues in the world that there's something within us that goes, oh, oh, that, that means a lot to me. I can, I can deeply feel um, that pain. And that that's a signal and a sign that maybe that's where we should be following our energy, our generosity, and our gifts. Maybe that's what I need to respond to in the world. And others can respond to other things, but I'm compelled in this case to give of myself to be a follower of Jesus in this moment and respond as he did with love and with compassion. I also think that we often resist responding because we'll have to give financially or in other ways. And as we've already talked about in our value of generosity, and these values aren't in isolation. They all connect and, and are part of sort of our, our, bigger, uh, our bigger mission. And so as we hear the call to respond, we also need to respond with generosity. And this understanding, as we mentioned in that value, that all that we have is to be shared, that our mission in this world is to, to work with each other and to make sure all of us are able to experience freedom, that all of us should be able to experience equality, that all of us should know that when we walk into a spiritual place that, that it's not a scary place, that it's not a place of judgment or of hurt, but it's truly a place where I belong. I get that there's a lot of pain in the world. And we could talk for hours as to why that is. And we know mostly it's because of the choices we as human beings make both on daily and individual basis, but also the, 
the structures, the systems, the ways that we've organized our marketplace and, and our commerce that sees that some get a lot and some get very little that has been put into place to make sure that profit is sometimes at the expense of the exploitation of vulnerable people. And so we know from, from the stories in the Bible and the way that Jesus lived that, that that's not his vision for our world, nor should it be ours. And so I invite you to join us, be with us here at Bridgewater United as we respond to the world, as we continue to open our eyes to see where does God's love need to be spoken? What gifts, both financially and otherwise, do we need to offer? Where does a voice need to be given? And how are we called to respond? Friends, if we say that charity begins at home, well, I guess in some ways it does, because home is that deep spiritual place we all live, that place where we're all united and we're all connected and only as fulfilled as our brothers and our sisters, our mothers, our fathers, our sons and our daughters, wherever they may dwell, in our own communities, or some way far across the world. Let's respond from the deep spiritual place we've been wired to with care, with love, and with God. Maybe so for all of us this day. Amen. May your blessing, O God, give us strength for the journey. May your spirit of wisdom give us vision for the road. May the love of Christ make us caring companions. And with your presence with us, together we go forward into this Lenten time. Amen. As we've been progressing through a reflection of our values here at Be United, spiritual growth, generosity, acceptance of all, and today responsiveness to the world. They're really the foundations of our stewardship. You know, so often when we think about our givings to the church, we may be tempted to think it's really for salaries and for our oil bill, for the day-to-day -day operational costs. And of course, those are all important to keep the ministry running. But this community of faith supports in a variety of ways individuals, families, community organizations and other charities, our interfaith group and work that we do as well. And so your gifts help us create this ministry, this place where we can truly respond to the needs of others. And so I thank you for your gifts. I encourage and invite you to continue supporting us. May God bless you. As always, we're really glad that you joined us today. And so, as we go about the busyness of our week and our lives, as we see the needs in others, let us live our Be United value and respond in love and in kindness and in compassion. May each of you know the wonderful blessing that you are. 
and that others are to you may be so. Amen.